In the early 1800s, settlers began to move west, many seeking land and new opportunities. In 1819, after Congress establishes the Arkansas Territory, William Edward Woodruff looked to secure his role as the territory's first printer. That same year, he founded the Arkansas Gazette, long recognized as one of the oldest newspapers west of the Mississippi. He would later become one of a few men who can truly be called a founding father of Little Rock. William Woodruff operated the Arkansas Gazette from its founding in 1819 until about 1853, the same year that he built his house. And that's extremely significant because the Arkansas Gazette recorded Arkansas's history during its territorial years, also during the early statehood of Arkansas, and then in the years leading up to the Civil War. The Arkansas Gazette itself was so significant because that was the only vehicle to get your news. That was the only way that you got information to anybody in the territory and then later in the state of Arkansas. And so the only way to get news and information was through the Arkansas Gazette. In 1827, he would marry Jane Eliza Mills. By the early 1850s, their family had grown and needed more space. Woodruff purchased 25 acres of land just east of Little Rock, and in 1852, he constructed a two-and-a-half-story, 13-room colonial-style home, adorned with a large porch that faced south towards 9th Street. The home featured a 40-foot hallway, 10 bedrooms, double parlors, and a library, or father's room, as it was called in the day. Much of what we know about the house is based on an account that was published in the Arkansas Gazette in 1931, written by his daughter, by Woodruff's daughter, um, Jane Georgine Woodruff. And she described the house, and it faced the quote-unquote sunny south, originally faced south towards 9th Street. And that says something about Woodruff and about Arkansans in general during that time period. They were very much from the south, and then later on during the Civil War, Woodruff would be an ardent supporter of the Confederacy. Woodruff would be tested greatly in 1863 when Union troops stormed Little Rock. Many citizens, including the 68-year-old Woodruff, fought the Union Army and lost. Because of his support for the Confederacy and his influential status, he was considered a threat and banished from his home and the city. Union forces took possession of the Woodruff home and used it as officers' headquarters and a hospital. He wrote a letter to a friend that must have had some kind of compromising you know, information in it. And it was intercepted by the Union Army. So at that point, that very greatly angered General Frederick Steele. He banished Woodruff from the city of Little Rock, and he took possession of his house and used it for officers' headquarters and for an officer's hospital that was part of a larger Union hospital complex on the side of St. John's College. After the Civil War, Woodruff returned home where he lived with his family until his death in 1885. Like many homes of this era, it has seen a number of significant changes and transitions. Most notably, the orientation of the home was changed so it would face north instead of south. In 1921, the home was remodeled into a 12-bedroom cottage, which was used for out-of-town businesswomen. Many of the home's original features were removed or rebuilt during the apartment-style remodeling over the years. For decades, it continued as apartments until 2005, when the interior was heavily damaged by a fire. Since that time, the home has remained vacant, and in 2007, it was placed on the most endangered places list. The Historic Preservation Alliance of Arkansas first got involved with the Woodruff House when we listed it on the most endangered places list in 2007. Um, and since then, we've worked to promote the Woodruff House um, and its significance statewide, um, and also to um, bolster local efforts to preserve the property, um, to support the QQA's application to the National Trust in 2007 to get funding for a condition assessment report. Well, our overall recommendations is that this house is viable. It has good bones, as we say in the business. It can be built upon. Uh, yes, there is deterioration that we have to deal with. There are structural issues that we have to deal with. Is it going to be expensive? Absolutely. There's no preservation project that comes out for a cheap. You can't cheapen <clears throat> the, the work that you do on these type of structures. Um, but 
The main thing we've discovered that with the rich history and the good structural integrity that we have that we can build upon, that we do have a building that has an alternative. Now we've got to find somebody to be able to invest some time and money into that alternative. The Quapa Quarter Association has been working on the Woodruff House for several years. Uh, we meet with potential buyers to talk about uh, tax credits and other incentives that they might be able to use. We worked with the National Trust for Historic Preservation and raised money to commission a conditions assessment in 2008, which will be extremely helpful when we do find the right buyer. In spite of the many remodels, deterioration, and fire damage, the home has remained in remarkably sound structural condition. However, without preservation and restoration, the home will continue to decay and remain unlivable. With limited documentation on the home's original construction, a restoration could reveal so much more about the home's history and its remarkable past. The Quapaw Quarter Association is committed to working with community groups and developers to find the best possible solution to save the house for future generations. Underneath all the layers of change throughout the years lies a true historic Arkansas treasure. There is this new uh, renewed interest in preserving the Woodruff House and really the condition of the Woodruff House is, is becoming more dire every day. Um, the longer a historic property sits vacant and um, unused, the more exposed it is to the elements, um, to potential vandals. I think this is a good time to preserve the Woodruff House because we've seen investment in several other areas of downtown and hopefully we can take that momentum into this new area. Well, it's one of the few antebellum homes left in Little Rock and antebellum homes are rare even around the state of Arkansas. And so that, since that's significant in itself, the method of construction and the architectural style and how the house has evolved over the years is indicative of that period. And it would help to study that time in Arkansas history. It's also the only property, extant property, associated directly with William Woodruff. And so losing that would be like losing a very powerful tie to the past and to interpreting Woodruff's history and his contributions to the state. It's important to have historical architecture because it tells the story of our history. In a nutshell, it's the best way for future generations to learn about the history. The history of the Woodruff family and William Woodruff starting the first newspaper in Arkansas. So important to tell that story. And here is the great opportunity of the urban farmstead and William Woodruff and his family living there. So being able to restore the house and tell that story we give back when we do that. We give back to the future generations instead of taking away by letting it deteriorate and be torn down.